welcome everyone to the interview series of Journey of Riches. And I'm joined by Idaliz Romero. Uh, she's a lab distributor. And we collaborated together on uh, living the paradigm of kindness. So awesome to be chatting with you today. Hi, Don. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And how's uh, how's life in Florida treating you? Life is really good. Life is a lot of changes happening and good changes. Really good changes. Uh, yeah. So where in Florida? Are you down in the panhandle or are you? No, I'm in central Florida. Central Florida. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Central Florida. So, okay, so north of Boca Raton? Mm, yes, definitely. Okay. I'm 20, okay, cool. 20 minutes from Orlando. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you're okay. That's okay. right in the center. Orlando. Yes. <laughs> okay, nice. It's a pretty big state. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. It is. And, um, yeah, I, I loved your chapter and, um, you know, it was Thank very you. vulnerable. Yeah, uh, just highlighted that the difference that kindness can make when you find yourself in a situation that you would just never expect in a million years. And mm -hmm. um, what did that situation teach you? Uh, well, it taught it taught me so much, John, but it mostly taught me that no matter how difficult time is, there is kindness in this world. Mm -hmm. There's always kindness. I mean, I know that the news and everything else talks about, you know, how this world is, you know, so bad, but there is so much kindness. Mm -hmm. And I learned that. I learned that there is still kindness in this world. There are so many people willing to show it, but you also have to give them a chance to show it. Yeah, I think that's a really yeah, you've got to give them a chance to show it. And um I just love how supportive you were of your husband and you ha had been like married for such a long time. Was it twenty five years? Twenty three. Twenty three. Yes. Yeah. Twenty three years. You pretty much got married straight away, like quite young. Um, I wasn't, but he was. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> How old were you? 23, he was 18. Uh huh. I was 23, he was 18. <laughs> okay, yeah, 23 is pretty young. 18 is extremely young, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you, you're having three kids together. Uh, we have two a boy and a girl. A boy and a girl, okay. And uh, then he was diagnosed with a debilitating uh, illness. Yes. Yeah, in 2005, he was diagnosed with uh, ALS, which is uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. For those that don't know, that's kind of a cousin to multiple sclerosis, so it's related. Mm -hmm. But it's just more devastating, more severe. Yeah, yeah. where you just you, you slowly you uh, lose use of your faculties. Uh, no, it's just you lose your use of all your muscles. Your muscles just die. Ah, uh, your muscles. Every okay. muscle of your body just stops working slowly, very slowly. <laughs> wow. So it, it takes time. It takes time. Your arms, your legs, your voice, your ability to eat. And of course, the last thing is the heart because it is a muscle. And you were able to, and what did your husband teach you during this process? Well, he taught me patience, <laughs> which I'm not okay. good at, <laughs> but he taught me patience. He literally taught me more about love. He really did. He taught me about love. Like you can show love to someone just by taking care of them, just by being there for them. And you can show love just by one stare, just by looking at somebody. Your eyes can say everything. And he couldn't speak, so his eyes just said everything. So there is ways of saying love without having to say the word. Yeah, I experienced that too with my dad, uh, with his mm -hmm. Parkinson. Yeah, he lost the use of his his voice. and uh, Yes, yeah. very difficult. 
Yeah, but you can feel the emotional blob when he's Mm-hmm. feeling it. It's Yes, incredible. you do. Mm Yeah. -hmm. Yes, you do. And he he was always positive. Yeah. Like he's you never saw him upset about the situation. He wasn't angry. He was he was sad, of course, but he wasn't bitter. He wasn't angry. He always had a smile. Always had a smile. So that taught me that no matter how difficult the situation is, you always have to look at the bright side. And he always did. He actually uh, spent his time writing letters, even though he couldn't use his hands. <laughs> All right. yeah. So how did he do that? Uh, we were given a laptop by uh, muscular dystrophy. And they gave us a, a laptop where there was a little dot that we put on his forehead. And that dot controlled the mouse. So with his head, he would control the mouse. And he was able to write. And he spent his time writing letters, farewell letters. Wow. It was amazing. Wow. It was totally amazing. That's incredible. Mm hmm Farewell. It was a nice, it was a wonderful gift. Not the laptop, but the letters. The letters were a wonderful gift. Yeah, very touching. Mm hmm He wrote to his And children, how did he wrote to his family's friends. Yeah. And how did your children cope with uh, your father, your um, husband's condition? It was, it was at the beginning, of course, the shock, you know, shock, denial, the tears, you know, it, it's difficult. But them seeing how he was handling it, I guess, gave them the strength to handle it, too. He was an example to them. And they were, they were, they were great. They, I was like, I was impressed with my children. <laughs> Not because they were my children, but, but I was impressed with them because they they coped so well with it. They really did. They were there with us, you know, they helped me in everything. My son, especially, we were just always working with him and helping him in everything that we can. So it, it was great. It was really great. We, we you got more united than what we were. So brought the family closer together. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, we've always been close, but it just, we got closer. That's beautiful. And um, I, I remember you shared in your chapter about how um, his work uh, supported you. Guys. He had a, a dying wish to go back to um, Utah. Mm. Mm hmm Yeah, he did. He he's he we always visited Utah because we have good friends there, but he wanted to actually live there whatever time he had left. And so I had to make that wish come true somehow. And I did. I, I just sat down and wrote an email and sent it to everyone I knew, friends, family, coworkers, bosses, everybody I could think of. And they I still get emotional. The response was incredible. Everyone helped. Everyone sent money. Everyone supported us. It was it was so much of outpouring of love for him because everybody knew what kind of person he was. I mean, they didn't know me, but they knew him. And they knew he was a kind person. He was always there for everybody else. And they knew that. And they knew he had a good heart. And so they were willing to do whatever they could. And they helped us out. They helped us so much with the trip with everything, packing, everything you could think of. And we had enough money for the trip and enough money to get to where we were going and to stay, have fun, a place to live and everything. So we didn't have to pay for anything because it was such an odd for, I, I can't even like, explain how, how I feel about that. <laughs> the kindness that they show was, I don't know. <laughs> never seen that before and no, I don't know if I'll ever see it again Oh, that's incredible. And um, did you live in? <laughs> Uh, how long did you live in Utah for? uh, well he was only there for six months he passed away after we got there six months later Oh. Okay, yeah. yeah he he passed away after six months
but, but it so, is so not. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was great. The six months that he was there, he was happy. Yeah, he was happy, and that's all that mattered. That he was happy. Yeah. Wow, and it's uh, yeah, just such a. Oh, I didn't even know how to describe that experience. I know for me with my dad, he had Parkinson's and then, you know, yeah. he, he passed the virus. It was, initially it was very difficult and mm -hmm. um, and then it got easier. It just felt like he was you know, now, just feels like he, you know, he's with me at different times. And mm -hmm. I'll often his favourite song come in my mm -hmm. mind or I'll with yes. my hand on my hand or on my shoulder mm -hmm. and... Well, yes, quite amazing. Just get little it reminders is. that he had really left. Mm -hmm. um, or yes. I had this rare bird that's really shy come out of nowhere and and just fly oh. near me and uh, yeah, yes. just little things like that. It's like oh, I just I feel my dad's energy right now. Mm -hmm. You do, you do feel them around you. I always do, and it's it's a good feeling. It's not sad, or it's just a great feeling to know that they're with you. Always. Yes. And how was the writing process? Was it was it difficult to write? Honestly, it wasn't. You know why? Because okay, I felt joy writing it because I was writing about him and and all my experiences with kindness, not just his. And so I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel, I really didn't. It, it surprised myself <laughs> because I didn't feel sad. I, I felt joy and I felt like this was something that I needed to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And so that was a, a very like a, a joyous experience. It wasn't cathartic in any way. No, no, because we always, we always had a. How do you say that? We always had a funny relationship. We always laughed. We were always even when when we did his uh his viewing, we there were no tears. Wow. We because everybody took the time to talk about the things that he did, the funny things, and his character and everything that was funny about him so there were no tears everybody was like wow this is a different kind of viewing <laughs> because no we talked about the good things about him. we didn't want to remember just that day but we wanted to remember his whole life not just the day he passed away but how he lived his life and that's what we wanted to remember and that's what i remember i don't remember that day but i don't want to remember that day because it's not important. For me, it's important everything else that happened before. Yeah. The good times, the, the times that we laughed, the times that we spent with the kids, all that, that that's what matters to me. So it was easy to talk about that. Yeah, I can imagine. And I, I'm curious, what do you hope um, readers take away from, from your chapter? Um... First of all, don't give, don't give up on the kindness in the world. There is kindness. And I know, like I said before, people are always seeing the negative part of the world. But there is so much kindness. So much kindness. We just have to be willing to look at it, to find it. But we also have to be kind. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I think people need to understand that, yes, we are looking for somebody to be kind to us. But are you being kind to someone? Are you smiling when you see somebody walking down the street? Are you saying hello? Are you, you know, are you showing kindness in one way or another? Mm -hmm. So you can't find kindness, but you also have to show kindness. And I think that's what's important. Yeah, show kindness. Yeah. Be the first, Always. be the instigator of kindness. Be the instigator. <laughs> yes, be the instigator. <laughs> Yeah. I like that word. <laughs> totally like that word. Be the instigator. 
Be the instigator of kindness, idol is. <laughs> there you go. Be the instigator of kindness. That's a good one. I like that. I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I loved your chapter. It's very heart centered. And, um, Thank you. Just wondering what advice, yeah, what advice would you have um, for someone that, you know, in that sort of, what advice would you give that's to handle a bereavement? Um, to handle the loss of a loved one, yeah. I would just say the same thing I did. I just focus on the positive. I focus on the good times. That that that's what get me through. Focusing on the good times. Focusing on how the person was before, not afterwards. That that's what kept me, kept me going. That's definitely what kept me going. Just the good memories. Mm -hmm the laughters, the fun times, you know, if you focus on that, the sadness won't be as, I mean, it will hurt, don't get me wrong, because I lie if I don't say it hurts, but it won't be as bad. It won't be as deep because you have the kindness and you have that good feeling of that person if that person was good. You will always remember that person, always. Yeah, I think that that's great. Yeah, great wisdom shared. You know, focus on the good times and focus mm -hmm. on the positive. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, if there was a good, strong, healthy relationship, there's a lot of good to focus on. And well, yeah, so. exactly. I mean, there's all, you know, in everything in life, there's always some, you know, bad situations or sad stuff. It's part of life. If you don't go yeah. through stuff like that, you don't grow. You have to grow. But True. well, we all the stuff that we went through helped us grow. So we were ready when this situation happened. It prepared us for this time of the you know his life. If mm -hmm. would, we wouldn't have gone through what we went through before, we wouldn't have been strong enough to handle the end. Mm. Yeah, prepared you for mm -hmm. for the yes. Uh, he, he passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I loved your chapter, and uh, I could relate to it. I uh, just, you know, slightly different circumstances. Um, son, father, rather than <laughs> you know, husband, wife. Um, but yeah, it was just, yeah, you know, just that, that he could still feel love, and he could still yes. just experience through the eyes, as you were saying, and. Mm -hmm. um, he was feeling yes. the emotion of it was just palpable. Like everyone in the room could feel it. Wow, it was that's pretty, great. Pretty, yeah. That is great. So, if you yeah. have that, I think you, you'll make it through. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is something about the power of love. Being considerate and, you know, and um, you just... For me, it just yeah, I was just more considerate, more kind. Uh, I was looking mm -hmm. for ways to, you know, how I could do good. Right. Just the situation. Was that the serum? I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. Was that similar for you as well? What happened with your husband? Um, that you were just looking for, you know, to ways that you could be kinder. Yes, definitely. And especially, most of all, being kinder to myself. Yeah. That's one thing I had to learn because after he passed away, I, you know, I wasn't taking care of me because I was, you know, taking care of him, focus on him. And mm -hmm. I neglected myself. Mm -hmm. And after he was, he passed away, I developed some health issues and stuff. And I realized that I had to take care of me. Now that I, now I had to be kind to me. And I had to learn mm. that the hard way. And I, I had to learn to be kind. And as soon as I'm kind to myself, I am filled enough to be kind to others. Because you can't give from an empty cup. So the I had to learn that. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I had to learn that. <laughs>
Wow. And is that where you're, how you, how you do discovered um, lab, lab products? No, lab products came oof, years later, but I okay. also went through a death, which also led me to lab. <laughs> Okay. And another loss, yes. another loss led me to laugh. <laughs> so that okay. that's where it came from. You brought that in our, our next book collaboration together uh, in elevating your life. Mm -hmm. You share that that the story. Yes, I did. Of, of yes, that I loss. did. Yeah. Yeah. A loss of my okay. beautiful boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my yeah, little uh, angel. So. Uh, Yeah, and of course, um, that book is going to be available when it's available. Uh, I'm not sure when it's going to get released here, I would say. Um, so, yeah, we're still working on the first draft. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, Mine's that's done. how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yours is, yeah, you're always first. So you were first with uh, Living Paradigm of Kindness and, uh Yeah. So hopefully yeah. you can be the first to um, let us know how many books you want so we can make sure you get your orders Oh, first. definitely, so. definitely. I definitely want some. <laughs> I want to have it with me because yeah. I think it's something yeah. that I could share with my family and, and, and I need to read it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they're, they're all so proud of me. <laughs> yeah, my I kids are so proud. <laughs> yeah, I can so. imagine yeah, you've been through a lot and, um, you know, you work on yourself. You know, you're, you're looking to constantly improve and learn yes, and I grow. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, my, that's my focus. And, yeah. Yeah. That is totally my focus. Um, I need to learn. I need to learn how to be. Most of it, my focus is to learn to be me. Yeah. For many years, I didn't know who I was. And unapologetically. Huh? And unapologetically be you. Yep. Because for many years I didn't know how to be me and now I'm finally learning how to be me. The real me. No. So sometimes we put, you know, masks for other people. And I'm finally I don't have that anymore. I don't need to. That's beautiful. That's awesome. That's a great, a great place to arrive at. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it's, it feels amazing. I mean, at this age, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> Life's just beginning for you, Adelise. <laughs> <laughs> at this age, uh, what's, what, what's next huh? for you? What's, what's next, next for you? Me? I am focusing on writing a solo book. Uh -huh. And that is my, I'm actually working on it now. And that one's, it's another thing. It's very difficult to talk about, but I think because I've done the work that I've done in the past years that I've been working on myself, as I write it, it's not as painful as I thought it was going to be because I have been working on myself and now I know who I am and those those incidents don't define me. And that's where I am right now. No, oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to, have you got a title for your solo? No, I'm still working on that one, but I do have the cover for it, like in my head, like I share with a friend and she's actually doing the cover for me. She's going to draw, she's an artist and she's going to draw the, the cover for me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I already, okay. like I see it, I know how it is going to be, but. I don't have the title yet, <laughs> but it'll come at the right time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Step by step. And mm -hmm. um, so people, people will be able to get that uh, when you hope to be finished by the end of the year. Yep. So I'm hoping by, by this, by the end of this year, I'm hoping okay. to be published by next year. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, yeah. great. And yeah, that's my um, goal. Okay, awesome. And um, wh uh, 
what's anything else that you'd like to share or is it, how can people get in contact with you? Um, um, mostly what I want to share is for, if you're struggling, just don't give up. No matter what you're struggling with, don't give up. Do not give up no matter what, even when it looks the hardest, when it looks the most difficult, when life seems to be completely over for you, don't give up. Do not give up ever. Because the next step will be the one that brings you out of that, whatever you're going through right now. So do not give up. I love that. That's a great way to, to conclude. Yeah. And uh, yeah, appreciate spending uh, time with you. Actually, Same this was here, our, our second take. <laughs> um, I, know, right? and so, <laughs> I appreciate your patience, and um, you actually do have a lot of patience. So I know that that's uh, maybe something that you feel like you have struggled with, but I find you be really patient. So I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. And um, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed really it. I enjoyed chat. it so much. <laughs> yeah. And I can't wait. Uh, people will put the link down below uh, where people can uh, download and, and read your chapter. It really awesome. is. You know, it's read. And uh, as all the chapters are in the book. Mm -hmm. and then yeah, we'll so have, I read them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then we'll have your second. Uh, we'll, we'll interview you again for the second, uh, our second collaboration in the series. Great. So, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Hopefully no second take. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever it takes to, to make it happen. And, uh, of course, you, if you'd like to get more of these interviews with the authors, uh, hit the sub subscribe button and we'll make sure we get uh, more of you and uh, more of these to you. All right. Thanks, Adelise. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate it.